tricks or treats <laughs> or something like that. Hello, it's Halloween time and we are featuring tricks or treats, the stamp set on this round of the Great American Stampin' Show. I'm Shannon, I've got three competitors. We bring our best skills to show you and you get to decide who the winner is each week. Um, and I will say that, you know, sometimes I get done with my projects and videos and, and I think, you know, that's a, yeah, I gave a good effort. That was a good card. And then sometimes, oh my word, I step away thinking that is an absolute work of art. And that's the situation today, my friend. We are going to see, we are, you are about to see a masterpiece, in my opinion, and of course, you get to decide what your opinion is too by liking my video and watching it and learning. Let's start by taking a look at this stamp set and all of the cute um, images that are there. Haunted House, Dracula, Frankenstein, bats, ghosts, um, headstones too. Um, good greetings, and of course some stars. Such a fun stamp set, and let me lead you over this direction to see one of my favorite Halloween treats. Just a couple candy corns. So I'll just be over here eating these. I'm going to leave those right there so you can remember. It's <laughs> such an easy recipe. Peanuts, make sure to get the salted, dry roasted kind, and throw them in with some candy corn for a delicious snack. This is a this has been a family favorite, the peanuts and M&M's since I was a little kid. But candy corns is a new exciting way <laughs> to have a delicious mix like that. Now, if you watched the Great American Stampin' Show round seven, you saw I had a huge pile of layers that I was using. Here's my pile this time. Much smaller, much less fancy. Just a couple of colors of cardstock, and that's about it. Basic gray, white, black. Uh, that is crushed curry, pretty peacock, and this is lost lagoon. So that's it. Oh, and then a little bit of masking paper. So those are the paper items. I, I don't know. I already promised you you're about to see a masterpiece. Are you getting skeptical already, or are you even more intrigued? <laughs> That's what I'm kind of wondering. So I'm going to start with this. This is my canvas for building my amazing masterpiece. And where is my stamp? I've got this haunted house. That's going to be my focal point for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this one time, just kind of like right in the middle. And I'm going to emboss this in black. And then I'm going to stamp it again in, let's see, I'm going to just rub that on the bottom, make sure it transfers really well. Stamp again in Versamark and emboss in black on crushed curry. Now one thing you'll want to do, which I already didn't do, so <laughs> let's go on the back of this masterpiece, is use an embossing buddy over this whole thing and then that will help make embossing in black a little bit easier. It doesn't really matter on the crushed curry because you'll see why, but that is not as critical. But it is critical on this one. Then I've got my little um, tray here, my black embossing powder, and I'm ready to emboss both of these. Okay, those are all embossed. Next, I've got this little ghost right here. And I'm stamping him in Versamark. And now I'm going to emboss him in clear embossing powder. And then one other step is I've got this masking paper and I've added little marks there, right there. And I'm going to cut my masking paper, kind of creating a path away from the house. Okay, progressing nicely. You can see, how oh, can you? There's a shiny ghost right there. I've got my masking paper that's a path coming out of the house. And one last thing I'm going to do is stamp um, a couple of the sets of tombstones, um, 
some might call them tombstones, some might call them um, <laughs> grave, uh, I, I forget what they're called now, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, I'm going to emboss these in silver. Whew, that was a lot of embossing, Whew. but look at how good that looks. And we are ready for the next step. Now I've got a couple of punches here, one and three, four circle, just getting a white piece there, and then cloud punch for the peacock. I could have done any color, but <laughs> when I was practicing, I did it in this color and I liked the way it looked. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll use that again. This is going to be, I bet you can guess what it is. It's going to be a moon. So I'm just going to put it up here in this corner and it's going to hang off and that's fine. I just put a little bit of temporary adhesive on it so that That'll stick down there, but it will also be able, I'll be able to remove it. Um, it's, a, it's another mask. It's masking off that area. Now, this is where the magic is about to happen, people. I've got Lost Lagoon and Misty Moonlight, and I'll start with Lost Lagoon. And I've got a blending brush. I don't know what this technique is called. Just, uh, I don't know, ink blending, I guess. But what I'm going to do is just... Go like this around my punch. And then I'm gonna do that over and over and over again till I'm making all different kinds of layers. The only way that you can mess this up is to leave white space. So you don't wanna leave white space. And sometimes you'll get to a point like this and be like, oh, it just looks like clouds. I don't want clouds. So then you keep going. And if you guessed that I'm trying to create mist. Well, you're right. Okay, now I realized I forgot to attach my pathway. I think it will still be okay. I wanted the pathway to be kind of a lost lagoon color in the end. So I'll just kind of fill that in a little bit of Lost Lagoon, and then I'm going to attach my pathway and mask that off. Now, if you're thinking, Shannon, why did you make this pathway so long? First, I'm just, you know, I've got this shirt on and I'm just putting this down to my shirt to kind of get some fuzz on it so that this masking paper is not so sticky. And I'm just going to start that right there at the front door. In fact, that actually looks a little too small. I'm going to trim that off. Trim that off? Yeah, I'll trim it off just a little bit. And make that path right there. And then stick it down to that. Okay. And that's just where I'm going to leave it for now. And you'll see the, the rest as it's coming together. So I'm masking that off again. And now I'm going to continue on making my mist. And I might need to do a little bit more of Misty Moonlight. But then I'm going to bring in... Um, memento and add some gray, gray slash black. Okay, now I need to take a tissue or a rag and uncover my ghost and remove the moon. Now the moon is not gonna be that bright, but I wanted to protect it to start with just to make sure I got the right amount of mist on that. So I'll just put a little bit now across there. So it looks like some mist kind of flying in. And the cool thing about this technique is no matter how many times you do it, you could still do it more to cover up more layers and make it darker and darker. Well, of course, until you get to completely black. So <laughs> watch out for that if you're starting to approach that point. Okay, it's looking amazing. Now we've got a floating house. We need to deal with that. Oh, and I'm gonna actually rub the, the house a little bit. When all is said and done, it'll be a good idea to reheat that, both of those, so that they get shiny again because the ink can kind of dull, make them a little bit dull. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the shine on the house is not, um, in fact, I'll just do that right now. 
Okay, let's get some spooky trees in this scene. This tree is actually the veins from, I've got the stamp set here, let me show you, the veins from the autumn leaves set. So you can see this right here, one of the leaf veins. So I'm going to use that to make it look like a very, uh, I don't know, sad, barren tree, if you will. <laughs> no leaves, all the leaves have fallen off already. And since it's not very long, I'm kind of angling it over this way so that the stem just kind of runs off the side. And then this one is fine to be like that. That works. And on this side over here, I want this to come up over the moon just a little bit so that it looks like the trees. This is like a perspective um, masterpiece, a perspective work of art because the trees are close and the moon is further away. So that's how the trees can be in front of the moon. And then we'll do a third one here. Okay, that's looking awesome. And now we need some ground. So in order to get the ground, let's see, I just need a scrap, I'll grab, I've got some post-its sticking here and I'll just stick those down. Oh, like right about there should work. And just straight across. Let's see, is my piece straight? Just pretty straight across, doesn't need to be perfect. Oops, it needs to go the other way though, hello. I'm gonna just put them right through there. And now I'm masking off the top and instead ready to make the ground. That is looking amazing. So I did a little more blending and a little bit of Memento direct to the paper. Now, before I remove my walkway though, I'm going to add this piece of Lost Lagoon cardstock, almost touching um, right above. And this will be part of my fancy card. This is gonna be a fun fold. I haven't even mentioned that yet, how exciting. So I'm just gonna put that over there. And now I'm gonna do the same technique across here. Just direct Memento to the cardstock, cover that over, and then a little bit more ink blending. Okay, this is looking so cool. And this is a bit of a moment of truth here. Let's peel some of these layers away and see how this is looking. Um, I'm going to stamp a couple of bats up here in the moon. They're flying all around. And then I'm going to flip this around and have some flying in this other way, like so, amazing. And let's see, now we need to peel, well actually I can leave that on for a minute. Now, where did my headstones go? I am going to stamp those a little bit more. This whole ground down here is going to be, let me move this over here, is going to be graveyard. And that's why I wanted to make this ground cover um, you know, with, with the, the way I was doing it. So it's not completely covered. That's why I didn't do black cardstock. Um, but instead I want it to be a little bit transparent so that when I stamped these, they would show. So I'm stamping them on both sides of the pathway. Yeah, they're kind of blending in over here. I'm not seeing a lot of them. I probably got it a little bit too dark. Okay, my video cut out for a minute, but I think it's okay. I've stamped a ton of headstones all over in all three colors that I've been using. Lost Lagoon, um, I didn't say what this one was. Misty Moonlight, because hello, what makes better mist than Misty Moonlight? And now I'm just really overdoing it unnecessarily because it's just plain fun. So I'll stop there and bring back into view these that I embossed at the beginning. I'm gonna cut these out and then they'll be perfect to lay on top. Now here, those are all ready to go to stick down to my ground right there. How cool is that? And remember that other house that I embossed on the crushed curry? Look at all these. So this is definitely the fussiest part of the whole thing. 
And so <laughs> I'm going to now um, get my take your pick tool out and glue all of these windows on top of this so that there's a nice yellow glow inside the house. Perfect. And this one on this side. Let's peel away this walkway and see how it looks. Exciting! Okay, I'm going to just add a little bit of, like, a, just make this so that the walkway is not quite so perfect. Just add a little, some little black marks in there. So this piece is going to just fold up like that. And where is my bone folder? Always hiding. That's like the most, the biggest thing I struggle with, okay? And then we're gonna fold these down. So this one's gonna come down and see how they match. So this is actually kind of like a gate fold, but you know, the same idea, but not exactly. And then there's this, this line right here, which should be in the middle of this panel. And it looks like it pretty much Now is. one thing I didn't tell you is that Halloween to me has always been pretty special because um, I have three sisters and two of them have birthdays in October. And so I always, in addition, October is my favorite month because of the weather. Oh, it's just so dreamy here in Utah, at least. It's so breezy and the temperature changes and I love to have all the windows in the house open. But, um, so I'm just sticking this down to my, um, black frame. There we go. So this is a birthday card is what I'm getting at. <laughs> so my mom would always make this delicious popcorn cake that had like popcorn. It was kind of like a giant popcorn ball, to be honest. Modern Garden, one of the newer stamp sets. And I've got It's Your Birthday, and then I've got Eek. Eek! It's your birthday! <laughs> That's how you can say it in your mind. So I'll just uh, put that right down here in the very corner. And then what I'm going to do next is make it just a little bit fancier. First, I'm going to clean that eek with my chamois so it's all clean and now I'm going to just put the e's the two e's down in memento again Ugh, photopolymer stamps really make this easy and then I will just layer those on top of the other or next to the others so that we just make that word a little bit longer <laughs> eek. and so now hopefully that will sound just like I made it sound okay this piece is just gonna get stuck right down there covering over and now we need a little bit of ribbon so I've got this is probably my favorite ribbon maybe my favorite ribbon ever this black and white gingham and there's new vanilla and white gingham um, I didn't actually remember that I just grabbed for this one it was the first one I got they would both work but I'm going to color this with a Stampin' Blend. What color is this? Light Night of Navy. Get this bow tied. And then the last step is attaching our special masterpiece, special work of art. It's about time for you to vote. Let me know if you like my card. I would love your vote. I just have enjoyed creating this little work of art for you. And I hope that you might want to try some of these techniques. They're super fun. Um, the other thing is we are sending out the gas girls, the great American Stampin' Show girls are sending out Christmas tutorials. So if you want Christmas card tutorials, make sure to sign up for my mailing list. The link is in the description, right? Um, along with the links to um, Jody, Julie, and Brandy's videos. Check those out. I cannot wait to see their videos. That might be the best part of this whole thing is um, when I get to see their videos because it's after they've already launched. Okay, so I'm going to just make sure this is supposed to be a nice little frame right here. And then, boom, we've got an easel card. <laughs> it's more like a work of art, uh, a little card work of art, birthday card work of art that can sit on a mantle and be admired for the month of October. Now you might be saying, uh, where am I supposed to write on that card? Well, the back, tons of space. <laughs> but it's also perfect like this. 
with the bow over the top and it can go inside an envelope and be ready to um, be ready for my sister's birthday. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I had fun. I look forward to this each every two weeks and can't wait to see what you think. Leave me a comment or a thumbs up and I will see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Bye-bye.